Ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo thousand dollar brown stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. It has come to that time, ladies and gentlemen, the deck that has been making Yu Gi Oh trend on Twitter, believe it or not, because it's going to probably cost you about a thousand smackaroonies, assuming you don't have any sort of staples or anything, to build. Fire Kings. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth, where we are going to be covering Fire Kings. How to play it, combos, choke points. Spoiler alert, it's kind of not that hard to stop this deck if they don't open any outs to your Droll and Lockbird or your Ash Blossom. So, is it going to probably be $1,000? Yes, assuming that you don't already have like Ash Drolls or Imperms or things like that. I've talked about that previously. I'm not going to harp on the price here because we've already talked about that in our other video where we talked about people are quitting because of a thousand dollar meta deck. You have other options available to you. Um, this is for people where even if you can't afford to play the deck, this video is still helpful to you because you're gonna learn how to beat the deck, what choke points it has, things like that. So um, I'm not advocating that you should play it, I'm not advocating you shouldn't. I personally am going to play it. It is a very complicated combo deck. Do keep that in mind. Um, what else can I say other than like this deck is just absolutely insane? I think the combos are going to speak for itself. Uh, as always, we've got the printout proxies. The only thing that you need to know uh, moving into this is that this blank card that I have here, also, I'm actually testing ghost bells. I just can't find mine, so the ghost ogres are in here. Um, but just keep that in mind that with the combos, if you happen to see uh, ghost ogre, you can just assume it's ghost bell or any hand trap that can pop off in this deck and do well. It just depends on what the meta calls for at the time that you watch this video. Uh, but the one blank card in this deck is um, the Snake Eye Dramatic Chase that editing may be sure to have a picture of that up on the screen at some point. Uh, Snake Eye Dramatic Chase just says that you can take a Dia Bell Star monster from your hand deck or graveyard um, and place it into your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. Then at the end phase, you can manage the Dramatic Chase to special summon any monster that's in your spell and trap zone uh, to the field. So it's it's actually really good. And since it's a Snake Eye card, you can search it off Populous, which is really sexy. Um, so as always with these uh, combo videos, um, or with these in-depth videos, I should say, we are going to be talking about combos. Of course, the uh, busted ass, prepare your wallet and your anuses card, uh, bonfire. Um, I want to go through some of the main combos that this deck has, and then along the way we can talk about the choke points and things like that. As I said, this deck is very combo heavy, um, however, it's pretty easy to stop whether, you know, they activate a Ponyx in a standby phase and they get it back to their hand and then you use Triple Tactic Thrust to go for Soul Release and banish five cards out of their graveyard. That's why I'm messing around with Ghost Bell in the main deck, because if they try to do that and you have the Ghost Bell, then you just stop the Soul Release. Um, but... With all that out of the way, let's just go on ahead and dive on into this video. Be sure to like the video, and you can also save this video to your Watch Later playlist, and YouTube will actually save where you left off in the video. So if you got to go to work, if you got to take a dump, if you got to go take your kids to the playground, whatever the case may be, uh, you can resume from where my sexy voice left off. So let's start off, of course, with Bonfire being able to add you a Pyro-type monster. Uh, from your deck to your hand, you're of course going to go for the Populous. I'm going to try and spin these cards around as best I can. Uh, if not, then please just bear with me. Um, I'm also going to assume that most players know what these cards do. Um, this is obviously post Phantom Nightmare since we're talking about Populous because I feel like if we're not talking about post Phantom Nightmare, then the deck is just kind of whatever. It's still good, but I, the main kit and caboodle of this is going to be post Phantom Nightmare when everybody's playing these Snake Eye cards. So we're going to add Populous. Since Populous was added from the deck to the hand besides drawing, you can activate its effect with Special Summon. Um, Spoiler alert, since uh, this will activate on a new chain, the opponent can change roll and you're basically crapping your pants because now you're not going to be able to search off of the Populous, you're not going to be able to search off of Ponix to get you to Sanctuary, which gets you to Island. Island can't pop a card to get you a search. Um, yeah, and then of course people like my dad who don't play any hand traps and they're going second 8 axis deck literally rage quit Yu-Gi-Oh. This deck made him rage quit Yu-Gi-Oh when we were play testing last night. He literally said and I quote, "Avery, if this is what Yu-Gi-Oh has become, I'm, I'm not going to play anymore. I'm not even going to play in regionals. I'm just going to play 40 card stall decks." Keep in mind this is the same man who played Mystic Mind for 4 years and thought that that was a healthy thing. 
So, yeah, uh, take that for what you will. Um, but, yeah, so uh, ashing the bonfire or even drolling the bonfire if they go for, like, populace is a great choke point because they're just going to be crapping their pants all over the floor. It's it's fantastic. Um, so we're going to activate the populace effect. This adds any snake eye uh, spell or trap from the deck to the hand. So don't let your opponent cheat you and let them add the Seeker of Simple Spoils because that's a Simple Spoil card. They can only add snake eye cards to hand. Does not set it to the field, just adds it to the hand. So don't let the opponent cheat you on that now typically if you already open up the uh original sinful spoils then you can go for dramatic chase because dramatic chase is a quick play spell um so if you set it off of the black witch then you can't play it that turn uh but if you already open up this or if you open up like black witch to get you to it or wanted you know whatever um, then you can just go for the Dramatic Chase, and then the Dramatic Chase can put the Black Witch in the back row. We'll be talking a little bit more about that later. Um, so you may be thinking, there's a couple different lines that you can go with this, right? Uh, one play is that you can active, or not activate, you can send off the Populace to make a Link Karibo, um, and then put the Populace into the back row, but then that really plays into Nib hard. So I've been getting into the practice um, again, this is just a one-card combo, assuming you don't open up like a way to stop Nib or, you know, Arvada to have the monster negate, whatever the hell it is that you get. Um, I am just trying to play through Nib as best I can, and that's because, as I've said before on the channel, I have terrible luck in this game. If anyone is going to have the giant space rock to hit my asshole with, it's going to be you playing against me. So I just do my best to play around or set myself up to play through the Nib as best I can. So one play that you can do with this is that you can link off with the Populous, make a Link Karibo. Populous effect is going to put itself into the back row since it was sent from the field of the grave. You can put it in the back row as a continuous spell. Then you can use the spell to dump off the Link Karibo to get out Ash to search the Ponyx and then send this and the Ash off to make the Flame Bridge. You got your two level one fires engraved. Doing the Link Karibo line essentially just gives you easier access to Heat Soul because eventually you're going to have Sunlight Wolf up. You contribute a level one, get out the Link Karibo, make a Heat Soul, draw one on your turn, draw one on the opponent's turn, and you're sitting there with a big old grin on your face. It's all variance, right? It just depends on the game state whether or not we see Nib being played. That's why I said in my previous video that it's going to kind of be like 4D chess, where players are going to be making moves that play into Nib because no one's playing Nib, but then you have people that say, oh, well, if Nib's not seen playing, they're going for this combo, I'm going to play Nib because of it, and it's like a whole 4D chess thing, and I don't feel like making the tumors in my brain explode. So we're just going to pretend that Nib exists. So we're going to activate the uh, original Simple Spoil uh, to send off the populace. Also, fun fact, this original Simple Spoil card at the time of making this video is like $8, and it's a fucking super rare. Like, all these cards are so high. Um, we are going to go for, if I can find it, my printout, uh, Snake Eye Ash. Um, something else that uh, Dex, the Fire King Dex, have been playing in the OCG is Oak. Oak's effect allows you to add a level 1 Fire Monster that is banished back to your hand. So if you've got like a Ponyx Banish or something, you can get it back to your hand and then it has the same effect as Ash that so you send itself on another face-up card to summon Flamberge. Well, any Snake Eye card, but regardless. Um, usually you're going to go for the Ash. Um, so Ash as effect will activate as Chinook 1. And then Ponyx is going to activate on Chinook 2. Um, so you can chain block the Ash um, with this, which I feel like the opponent would already have Ash uh, or already have used it. So the Populous, excuse me, the Poppus is going to go into the back row. The Ash is going to uh, search you a level 1 fire, which is typically going to be adding Ponix to hand, which is always a great play. Um, and then assuming you have no other plays here, uh, you can just use the effect of Ash, sending off both your level 1s, because you want to get those into the grave, to summon a Snake Eye monster from your hand or deck. So I, uh, you, you don't really want to open up Flamberge, but if you can discard it, it does say whenever it's sent from the hand or field to grave, summon out two level ones from your grave. Uh, so we're going to get out Flamberge. And this is the one that puts the mask right into the back row because, you know, it, it got to glow up on Tinder like that. Um, so this is like really just essentially the end board for Snake Eyes, right? Nothing too super complicated. But then you throw in the Fire King stuff and then like you just want to rip your hair out. So now we're going to normal summon Ponyx because of course we still have our normal summon in this game. Uh, we're going to use the effect to add Sanctuary. We're going to activate Sanctuary. Do, 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 do. Does this look familiar? It should, Sugar Boo Bear. Uh, we're going to place the island. Also, if you're playing Anti-Spell, and if you activate Anti-Spell, for, for whatever reason, like after I'm able to play Sanctuary, like for whatever reason, this is face up, right? An Anti-Spell is face up. This can still place Fire King Island because it says place, not activate. 
yeah, that's that's sexy. Um, so now we're going to activate the island. We're going to pop the Ponyx. Going for the Gawoonix. Also, let me know down in the comments below. Do you prefer if I do Dueling Book uh, over IRL Test Hands? I prefer to do IRL Test Hands only because Dueling Book can be really um, ad heavy. It's gotten a lot more ad heavy recently. So that's why I do these live like IRL Test Hands. Um, but do let me know down in the comments what you prefer because I can always swap to Dueling Book. That's not a big deal. Um, so now on a new chain, since a fire monster was destroyed in Ponix, we're going to activate Grunix's effect. Summing out the Grunix, Grunix is also going to activate because of course it has an effect. We're in Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2024. We're going to pop the Kirin. Kirin's going to activate, giving us our Whittle Ponix back. Now the game state no longer recognizes that Ponix was destroyed. So if you link off with this, if you don't pop it again this turn, it will not come back to your hand in the standby phase. Don't let people cheat you because now it's been special summoned back off of Kirin. Therefore, it's not being recognized as being destroyed. So do keep that in mind. Um, from here, you can make a few different plays. I am going to go with the most ideal scenario because obviously the opponent could nib us here. Um, some people will say you should nib them now. You should not nib the fucking Fire King player now. Um, because that's a very, very incorrect play. Because all that you've done, or rather all the Fire King player has done at this point, is they've blown their normal summon, sure. But then they still have both of these. If the reason why you should not be nibbing at this point. If you nib my field now, I'm not really going to care. Um, the Flamberge is still going to get me two level ones for my grave. Two level one fires. So I'm going to get back the Ash and the Populous. I can then make options from there. I can go into Link Karibo and like try to Link Climb or something. Or even just ending on a Little Knight, depending on what else I have. Um, you can also slam them both into Sunlight Wolf. Or if you can establish a third monster depending on what else is in your hand, uh, then you can get to Promethean Princess, which gets you back to Flamberge Dragon. Now, that does lock you into fires if you go down that route. Again, though, it all depends on what kind of hand the opponent has. And in this combo scenario, we've only used really one card out of our hand. We used the Bonfire. So we would still have a four-card hand. We searched the uh, Ponyx. So now we still have our five-card hand. We normal summon that. Uh, the Ponix. Now we're sitting with four cards in our hand. Those can be anything. Those can be extra gas. It can be hand traps to just blow out the opponent on the next turn, right? So you really, if you have Nib, you want to wait until they do this, which is Garunix and Flamberge. Get out of here. We're going to link off into do, 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 uh, Mascarena. This is might be kind of hard to see but this is in the extra monster zone right you can see that okay it's on up here uh so now the flamberge is going to activate uh giving us in fact i can actually kind of slide everything down here yeah there we go so this is on up here this is our field spell this is our back row uh so now the flamberge is going to activate uh giving us back uh the populace and the um ash so now this is a great time to nib because now we're just losing everything. You're leaving the Fire King player with Sanctuary and an island that's already been used. The Sanctuary is pretty much useless. Um, and sure, like they have stuff in Grave, like they've got Garunix and Kirin, but like that really doesn't matter. Like there's no Fire Monster to pop and then they're playing with a four card hand. So there's not much that they can really do at that point. So again, variance aside, we're just assuming that they don't have anything. Uh, so now we've got the Mascarena. So we're going to do Mascarena and, you know, we're going to go ahead and just get rid of the Ponyx because we'd rather just have an engrave for, you guessed it, boys and girls, Promethean Princess. So now we're going to activate Promethean Princess's effect, which lets us summon any fire monster from our graveyard. Flamberge Dragon's a fire. This Promethean Princess needs to be fucking banned. Like, this card's insane. Um, we're going to activate Flamberge Dragon's effect, which lets you do either grave or field and uh, target that target a monster in either field or grave, put it into that owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell, but it only lets you special summon uh, a monster from your back row during the opponent's turn. Um, I think it can also do the opponent's field, but like, why would you? Um, so now we put the mask in the back row. So now you're gonna leave the Flamberge up because then that's gonna be able to summon mask in during the opponent's turn. And then once you get Promethean Princess into the grave, then if the opponent special summons, you can pop their monster in a fire, <laughs> like the Flamberge, which is gonna get you these two things back. And then you can just summon it out. And it's, it's insane. This, this whole combo made my dad rage quit the game. <laughs> so 
Now, with Promethean Princess, we're only locked into fires. We don't care because Sunlight Wolf is our baby. Um, so we're going to link off the Promethean and the Ash. It doesn't matter if you use Populous or Ash here. Uh, we're going to make the Sunlight Wolf. Now, if you had done the Link Karibo here, you could tribute off the Populous for Link Karibo, and then the Sunlight Wolf would get you to um, a fire out of your grave. Um, in this combo's case, I think we can still get there. I'm trying to remember if there's a way. Because you can either extend from your hand, um, or you can summon something to the zone that it points to. Um, oh, well, yeah, because you can just use the Populous here and then make the Link Karibo right here. That's also the other option that you can just hard make the Link Karibo because Populous is a level one. So now Sunlight Wolf is going to trigger, uh, and that's going to get us the Kirin to our hand. So this is going to be kind of hard to show, but we're going to put this right here. This is our hand. So now we have Kirin in hand. Uh, which is just hilarious because now we can pop any fire monster to summon it and it dodges and permits. It's great. Um, so now, uh, since both of these are Cybers monsters, we can just link these away and go into Deco Talker Heat Soul. And then we're going to pay a thousand and we're going to, it doesn't really matter what this card is, we're going to draw a card. So now we're sitting with two cards in our hand plus four others. So like we're up to six at this point. Um, and then we could just pass turn on this and then draw off of the uh, Heat Soul. Um, and even though it doesn't look like that great of a board, it's actually pretty solid. You know, you have to keep in mind that during the opponent's turn, you can summon out the Masquerina. Um, you could pop the Flamberge to summon Kirin. That's going to trigger Garunix to summon. And then once the opponent special summons, you can use the Sanctuary to make the uh, Hyang exceed. Uh, where is this? Yeah, you can make this exceed here. So it looks like a basic uh, board on paper, but when you start seeing all the interruptions, that's when it gets nutty. So the opponent makes a play. You can summon out Masquerina. Um, if you want to summon the Kirin because you just want to be cool like that, we're going to use the Kirin. We're going to pop the Flamberge. Flamberge gets you two level ones. It doesn't really matter where these go at this point. Um, you can then <laughs> you can use the Masquerina to link off into like a Little Knight and banish something or do like an Apollosa. Because a fire monster popped, you can go for Garunix. Garunix can pop another Ponix out of your deck. You have two Fire Kings up, so now you make the Exceed. Oh, uh, it's do you see now why this is insane? Like this this deck's absolutely nuts. And we haven't even used the Promethean Princess yet. Like Holy jumping banana balls. So this is a basic combo. Again, if you draw on the bonfire, then the Fire King player just craps on themselves because they're not making this. So with all that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and go into the next combo. All right, we're just going to do a little bit of power shuffling here. Um, I know I said I wasn't really going to be showing off like test hands and stuff because this build is very much like in the testing phase. Like I'm playing 12 hand traps right now and I've ran into some consistency issues. I don't think that this build is by far perfect. Like I've seen some builds online that don't even play Dramatic Chase um, and Dramatic Chase really just works as an extender. Um, but, but we're going to see how we open. Like maybe I open up a bunch of hand traps and I can say, see, you don't want to play 12 hand traps in a deck like this. You want to play maybe nine. Maybe you just want to play six and just play more engine to play through things like Nibiru. I'm sure some people are going to say, should you play cross out Dezineer? I don't think you need to be playing cross out Dezineer in a deck like this. If anything, you should just be playing Nib yourself at that point because like Nib is just really good. I feel like Nib would actually be kind of solid going into the mirror match. Um, but it just all depends on how the deck evolves. You know, if people are maxing out on Arvadas, which, speak of the devil, we opened up Arvada, then they don't even have to worry about Nib. So, you know, it's it's kind of whatever at that point. Uh, keep in mind, these would technically be Bells, but really you can throw in any hand traps you want that would work in this deck. Um, so this is, like, kind of what I'm talking about with, like, a bricky hand. Um, but let's just see what we can do, like, even with a bricky hand. Uh, we could use Kirin to summon it. The Arvada is not going to be able to summon us anything, so it's it's kind of like whatever. Um, but let's just use the island because we can at least maybe do something here. So um, we're going to go island to pop a fire monster. So let's just pop. I don't even know if we even pop. Well, because we have to normal summon Ponix to get to Sanctuary, right? This is kind of where like the combos of it come in. Let's just normal summon the Arvada. 
Let's use the island to pop Kirin. Um, Cause then we can go for Garunix and summon Garunix. And then like if they hand trap us, we're good because we're insulated. Uh, Garunix affects summon popping Ponix. Yeah, this, this hand just made me dog shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, like, this hand's actually just, it's actually unplayable. Like, because you, the, the, the issue with Fire King, <clears throat> at least with this build, like, again, there are consistency factors that need to be worked out. This, this build's by no means perfect. Do not take mine for gospel, please. Um... I mean, you you have to get to Ponix because Ponix into Sanctuary, I feel even if you open Island, you have to have Sanctuary because you want to be able to make that rank 8. Um, and like you want to get Garunix in Grave because it can summon itself from Hand or Grave. At the same time, like you wouldn't want to smash these two together into a Sunlight Wolf because it's like, what are you even doing? Um, so like instead, like you could pop Kirin to add... Ponix, summon that and get to Sanctuary, but even then, like, you're just sitting with a dead Arvada. So unless, like, you did pop Arvada, search for Garunix, and maybe something like that, and then, like, summon Garunix and dump, I don't know, Ponix. Like, it's it's kind of a weird hand, because, like, if you search the Ponix and get to Sanctuary, it doesn't really do you anything. And that's what I mean with, like, you know, this deck is not going to be the end-all be-all because, you you know, no matter what kind of build you end up with, no matter how consistent it is, you're going to end up with those hands that are just not the best. Um, so let's let's just reshuffle it here and see if we can get something like that. But I always, I, I, I don't mind showing off. I actually always really like um, showing the kind of more bricky hands because it can show, like, what the deck can do if it doesn't open perfectly it's like you know okay whenever it opens perfectly it can do all these things but if it doesn't open perfectly can it even perform pause um and in this hands case we can most definitely perform the populace is actually not that much of a brick which is interesting for this deck because you would think that it would be a bit of a brick um but it's it's not entirely because you have to keep in mind that whenever it's normal or special summon, it gets you a snake eye spell or trap. Um, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And if you open it, then you don't necessarily lose to uh, bonfire or what am I saying? You don't necessarily lose to droll. Droll is going to be amazing this upcoming format. Droll is very much going to be a choke point for this deck. Um, so in this hand's case, you can just like summon the populace. I would think. Um, let's see. Yeah. Like, summon effect. Uh, oh, you want to ash me? I'm sorry, I have the one of. Please, uh, please go down to aisle nine and go away. <laughs> um, you could make the argument that you could just bonfire and ash and search Ponix, but yet you're already using up your normal summon, so you got to do something with your life here, right? So, let's see. Do -do 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 -do. do we go for dramatic chase here? No, we do not. Um, dramatic chase, yeah, so let's let's talk about that real quick. Um, dramatic chase is cool because of the fact that Dark Witch says when this card's sent from the field to the grave. So if you go dramatic chase and put Black Witch in the back row, and then you use Ash to send itself in the Black Witch to make the Flamberge, then Black Witch can trigger and send, like, say, this Populous in our Monster Zone. Send Populous, get out Black Witch, then Black Witch Chain like one to search for uh, a Snake Eye, Simple Spoil, Spell or Trap, whatever it is that it searches. And then Populous Chain Link 2. So that's another Ash block, uh, Chain Block moment. So I'm really a fan of Dramatic Chase in that sense. And it's also just another Snake Eye card you can search. Because if you open up original Simple Spoils and you don't have another Snake Eye card to search, it kind of sucks. Because then you have to waste your Populous uh, as your normal summon with nothing else to search. Like, you at least want to be searching something. I thought about the trap card, too, that negates, but that's only good going first. I'd rather have the dramatic chase that's a quick play to at least put the Black Witch in the back row. And then at the end phase of whoever's turn it is, you can banish it to summon out the Black Witch or anything that's in your back row. So it's got that going for it. Uh, so we're going to add the Simple Spoil. Uh, activate to send Populous. Again, you could make Link Creep here. In fact, you know what, just to show it, because we're fun like that we're ballsy like that we're gonna make link Kribo here um i don't really recommend this line of play unless you just don't care about nib at all and maybe when you're watching this uh, we're in phantom nightmare and there's just no nib uh so we're gonna activate uh well excuse me 
Make Link Rebo. Effective Populous. Put it in the back row. Activate uh, Simple Spoil. Send Link Rebo. You want to get it in Graves that you contribute to level 1 to summon it back. Uh, you could go for Ponyx here um, instead of going for Ash to summon it, but I want to be able to get to Flamberge. Um, and Bonfire can already get me to Ponyx. So that's that's what's interesting about it. Ideally, you would want to search Populous so that you're not wasting your normal summon here. Um, but either way, you're kind of wasting your normal summon. Uh, so we are going to go ahead. You could go for... Nah, we're just we're gonna go for Ash. Uh, Ash, and then Ash's effect gets the uh, Ponix to hand, uh, and then we can go Ash, sending off itself and the Populous to make Flamberge. It's also very easy to misplay with this deck because as I'm making this play, I feel like I've already misplayed. Um, because you could tribute Link Karibo. You can go for Ponix. Ponix gets Sanctuary. Sanctuary gets uh, Island. That would get you to basically a Garunix with a Kirin Engrave and a Ponix on board. But that's the issue is that, again, you don't have access to the Ash, so you don't get access to Flamberge. Um, yeah, I'm gonna... Huh, we're gonna reset this. So, but you know what? That's fine to show, though, too. Because, again, it goes to show how this deck is complicated and that people can misplay. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. Um, if we had, like, a Kirin in hand, then, like, we could Kirin pop Ponix and summon and, like, maybe make some plays... Um, but this goes to show how a complicated deck like this, you need to know your plays and what you're doing, um, or else you will get punished heavily for it. I mean, I've got Ash and Draw, so it's not the end of the world, but you still want to have the best board that you possibly can. So, we at least showed where that board would go if we made that choice, right? So, let's go ahead and rewind the clock back a little bit. So, uh, we had this up, this up, and then we activated Original Simple Spoil, and sending off link karibo the ponix would still be in deck so let's instead go for ponix and see where that gets us ponix is going to activate doing exactly what i just preached if you're enjoying the video be sure to leave a like i would very much appreciate it <clears throat> these videos are not easy to make because i have to learn the deck and make sure i'm not making mistakes like a momo um, or at least if I do make a mistake, then I can at least explain, you know, what my logic is behind it. So summon, add Sanctuary, play Sanctuary uh, to get the island. Island pops Ponix. I think you could pop Populous because I think it... Well, no, you can't pop the Populous because it's not treated as a um, uh, fire. Although Ash is a fire, right? Oh, yeah, cool. So you can pop Ash. That's actually kind of funny. Uh, add Garunix. Garunix affects summon. Effect to pop Kirin. Kirin's effect summons Ponix. And then we could still tribute level 1 for Link Kribo here. Um, <clears throat> and then we could go uh, Bonfire. Uh, so this is where Bonfire is like not the greatest because it's like, okay, you can search for Ash. Cool. Uh, Snake Eye Ash, obviously. But like we've already used our normal summons. So like, what are we doing? <laughs> So, we can link off, I guess, into something? Like, it's it's just kind of weird. Like, not having the Ash on the board just really sucks. Um, it's it's weird with Populous. Like, if, if you open it, it still gets you to original Sinful Spoils, which can get you to Ponix and get you to this stuff. Um, but it's also kind of a weird thing to open with because then if you're only playing one of it, then you open your one of, and now you can't bonfire into it and then still have your normal summon. So there are some builds that play like two to three populace. Um, that's something I'm also messing around with. Um, but this was, I think a good example to show like what a, I guess, mid range board would be for the deck. So these were just a couple combos that I wanted to show off. Um, let's go ahead and start talking about the choke points. So talking about the uh, choke points here, 
Something that I've been seeing some people talking about is like whether or not Imperm and all that is going to be good moving forward because you have a card like Kirin that is just a complete Imperm dodge. You summon Ponix, you activate the effect, they try to Imperm, you can chain the Kirin, pop Ponix, summon the Kirin, and then they still get to the Sanctuary. So I really don't know if because of Kirin, which is going to obviously be a three of, you know, it's hard to say if cards like Imperm are going to be all that good. It may just be better to lean into different hand traps, whether it's, like I said, Ghost Bell, um, D-Shifters, if your deck can play it. Obviously, a D-Shifter just shuts this whole deck down. Um, <clears throat> Ash Blossoms, Drolls, you know, whatever the case may be. Again, if they go Bonfire, they really don't have a lot of searches. Like, as good as this card is, it doesn't deserve to be over $100. It may not even be played as a 3 of because it searches any level 4 or lower pyro. It's not any level 4 or lower fire. It's a level 4 or lower pyro. So the options in a typ typical Fire King Snake Eyes deck is going to be uh, Ponix, Oak if they're playing it, the Snake Eye Ash, or the Snake Eye Populous. And it doesn't matter which any of those that they search once they play this because if you have the Droll and they don't have the Call By, well, now they're playing with a dead card in their hand, and it's going to be very difficult for them to build a board. They're going to have to build something suboptimally or maybe end on like a little night, but like unless they just opened up all the gas in their hand, they're really not going to be able to do much. And even then, like for them to play through a droll and have anything resembling a decent board, they would have to open, I think, like original sinful spoils and then send off whatever level one they search. So like if they get, I don't know, Populous, and then they use the effect of Special Summon and then don't search, use Original Sinful Spoil to send it off to like, I guess, go for Ponix, and then maybe they have gas in their hand. Even then, it's not going to be a good time for them. Um, anything Banishing is, of course, going to shut this down. Um, some decks may, uh, some of the Fire King builds may even just play one of a Bonfire. Because, again, it's it's not always the best thing in the world. They may play multiple populists to avoid opening it in a suboptimal sense. Um, so that's why I've been messing around. Um, like I said, things like Droll, Ash. Um, you could even play Imperm. Um, not Imperm. You could even play Nibiru instead of Imperm. Um, like I said, I'm messing around with uh, Ghost Bell, not Ghost Ogre. You, you don't want to use things that destroy because their stuff just wants to be destroyed. Um... But messing around with like Ghost Bell to, set, to shut off Graveyard Recursion, um, Thrust into Soul Release seems cute, but Bell shuts that down, so I really don't know. Um, but overall, is the deck very good? It is absolutely good. It is going to be one of the best decks in the room. However, it can be somewhat easily stopped depending on how the Fire King player opens. So just because the deck is $1,000... Doesn't mean you need to quit the game. Doesn't mean you say Yu Gi Oh is dying. It's not dying. You have options available to you. And I, I encourage you to, you know, watch this video and take your notes and practice and just keep on getting better. Find the choke points in this deck. You know, refer back to this video, show it to your friends, your grandma, whoever Disney's needs to learn how to beat Fire King. And I hope I was able to be of some kind of help to you uh, with this. So never fear. The Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth Man is here. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.